Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and today we've got another review for you. These are the Husingfeld Engineering Professional Pedals out of his series of Sim Racing Pedals. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me to review the Husingfeld Engineering Pedals, so we're going to start with the Professional Series, and later on we'll be doing the Ultimate Series. So let's get to it. So now let's see what comes in the box when you order a set of these Who's Belt Engineering Pro Pedals. Speaking of the box, I wanted to show you that. Let's see, it's, there it is. Now this comes in a regular brown box with this big box inside of it. And of course it's got the Husingfeld Engineering logo on it. And inside of that are the smaller boxes that each one of these pedals come inside. And inside of there is a bunch of bubble wrap. And these things are really wrapped up well uh, to make sure that they make their journey from the Netherlands all the way to the States without any issues or any breakage or scratches. And I can attest that he does a very good packaging job because it wasn't a scratch or anything wrong with these pedals when I took them out of the boxes. So, what comes in the box? First, we'll look at this little pack of goodies. It's got a urethane bumper in it, some metal washers, some plastic, hard plastic spacers, and some smaller spacers, the white, compared to the harder, thicker ones that are black. So this is used for adjusting your brake pedal. And we get a nice little tool kit that has two of each as far as Allen wrenches for adjusting, making adjustment to the pedals in general. There's a five, I think a four and a set of twos in here. And there's also a wrench, I think you can see it here. And we'll get to the more detail later on this wrench. This is a 12, 13, looks like a custom machined uh, CNC cut wrench that ships with the packs also for adjusting the nuts. And there's a little screwdriver in here that you'll be using for the connectors. There's little screw connectors on this PCB board that comes with your pedals. And this is a custom board that uh, Niels has made somewhere. And it's a really nice looking pedal, uh, board rather, and we'll get a good close up of that when we get to the actual close up of the pedals. And what else we got? Oh, well, we got a cord, and that's a USB cord with a USB Type B cord on the end there that plugs into your circuit board in the back. And we also get a nice glossy flyer. This has the Husingveld Engineering logo on it, and welcome you to the Husingveld family, basically. Very nice. And last but not least, we have the papers that have our instructions on them, and the parts list that's in the boxes. So make sure that you got everything you're supposed to. And actually a cool little coupon here for 50 euros for your next purchase at Husingfeld Engineering. Well, that's what's in the box. So now let's get a closer overall view of each one of these pedals and the features on them before we actually get to the adjustments. So now let's take a look at each individual pedal and the features of it, just a general overview. First off, the pedal faces are really nice on these. They're really well machined. I mean, this is a Nice, flat, well precision machine pedal face. It's a very smooth uh, texture to it or surface. And this is all stainless steel, by the way. All these pedals are all stainless steel metal, so they're never going to rest on you. Um, and we'll get to the adjustments of the pedal faces later. The pedal lever itself are two different pieces of stainless steel. And they're very long. And they're held together by one, two, three, four, five, six different bolts with spacers in them. And you can see the spacers there. Let's get a little closer here so you can see the spacers. And the bottom one has actually got a neat, again, this is really high quality stuff, you can see. It's got nice brass bushings pressed into the actual pivot point here of the pedal lever itself. And of course you can see the Mavin load cell that's sitting underneath. Now there is an, a, a little upgrade here on these pedals, and that is this blue urethane piece. This replaces the old urethane piece that was in uh, the previous models of the Pro pedals. And this is a little bit more robust, uh, Niels tells me, than uh, what people had in the other sets. They started uh, seeing actually some grooves being worn in where the urethane pieces actually come into contact with the pedal piece down here when it makes contact over here. And of course you can just rotate it around and start with a new piece. But of course, uh, Niels being the guy he is, uh, wasn't satisfied with that. So he decided to go ahead and upgrade the urethane to something a little tougher. And uh, so far so good. Uh, 
it's been wearing better than the other pieces have. And of course this piece itself actually slides back and forth to adjust how much pedal travel you have because the pedal bumps up against it. If you move it further back, you're going to have more travel. And of course, if you move it forward, you're going to have less travel in the pedal. Also, you can see here are the two nuts that are in a locking configuration for the preload on the spring itself. And you can change the preload of the spring. That's one of the adjustments on this throttle pedal. And of course, you can change the adjustment as far as the throw of the pedal. And you'll see in the back here, uh, or rather in the front and the back, is the two mounting plates that you use. And this one actually can be dropped down so you can tilt the pedal further forward. And that would be useful. They're pretty straight as it is. You can see here, it's a pretty straight uh, pedal to begin with. Keep the wire out of there. And you can actually mount these inverted. That's one cool thing about these sets. They're all individual pieces. And if you mounted it inverted, you could actually take this back bracket here and you could actually drop this body down so it would tilt further forward. So you could actually get it to a point where it's tilting forward and if you were hanging them in more of a GT type position. So that's very cool as far as the uh, adaptability and the flexibility of these pedals. Very nice finish everywhere. It's, it's just high quality unit. You can tell that the tolerances are very tight all through this, this assembly. Uh, really nice looking stuff. And there's this, I'll get a little closer here so you can see the, how this load cell is set up. Let's get the cord out of the way down there okay and I'm gonna do it this way maybe you get a better look at it there's a piece of acrylic back here or Lexan and that bolts to the back of the load cell and in the front if you can look down here in between the front of the pedal you can see there's another piece of acrylic right in here and there's a spring you can see the spring in there let me tilt it this way maybe we can get a better look at it there it is and there's a spring that actually attaches down to a screw that goes into the front of the load cell. And that's what causes the load cell to actually move is when you push this pedal. It causes the tension to go down in the front of that load cell, which of course sends those signals down the wires back here over to the circuit board, which then of course sends through the USB to your computer. So we know where the pedal position is. So, very nice setup. Very high quality uh, as far as assembly and parts. Uh, again, uh, Niels has done a great job here with these. It's, it's one of those things when you take out of the box, as soon as you look at these things, you know, wow, this, is, this has been a, a really well-made pedal, especially if you're experienced with pedals that came in the G27s or the T500s or the, even the um, um, CSPs version 1 and 2s from Fnatic. This stuff is just, uh, just head and shoulders above those kind of things. And you notice, you notice that as soon as you take it out of the box. All right, so let's take a look at the clutch before we get to the brake. And the clutch has a unique uh, design to it. It's also very much like the throttle, except you can see the face is different. It's got a little notch cut out of it over here. So all three of these faces on the pedals are actually different. Again, you can see it has the brass bushing in the front and the same kind of load cell set up on the bottom there. And we have also a way to preload the springs here. Let me get a little closer here so you can see that. And it's the same deal with the two nuts set up in a locking configuration and we can actually take a little bit of preload off that spring or put more on it depending on what we want but there's another adjustment here for moving this actual swing arm i'm calling it a swing arm somebody might call it something else and the further you move this thing up the easier it is to press this pedal down and the further you move it down of course the harder it gets and also we have the same blue urethane bumper that actually adjusts the travel of the pedal and right now I have it set it, let's see if we can see it here. I have it set at the second one. And you can see that it's very cool the way this works. You can see that swing arm will actually come up. And that, when it comes up, it, it gets real easy to hold the pedal down. And that's just like, and of course, when it comes back, you see it pop there. It pushes back uh, very quickly. And that simulates very well, or pretty accurately, what you feel in a real race car when you press down the clutch pedal and you you compress or you, you, you lift off that pedal, uh, rather the clutch plate, using the pressure plate springs. And it's really hard at first, and there's a little bit of easy right there, and then it gets hard, and then it, you kind of break through as you can finish compressing the springs in the pressure plate. So it's very cool the way that works. 
Now there are some issues, and we'll talk about when we get to the adjustments parts, of what you need to do when you move these holes up or down as far as uh, where, how much travel you get out of this pedal based on how much tension you have on it. So, again, we'll give you a little bottom look there of the load cell. And these are all high quality Mavin load cells, really nice units. Right, so we'll have a look at the main pedal. The most important pedal is the brake pedal, of course. At least to me, that's the most brake, uh, important pedal. And you can see its face also is a little different than the rest of them. Nice big fat for surface to get your foot on. I really like that uh, because a lot of times uh, when we're doing clutching and braking, sometimes uh, your foot can get in between them. But when the bigger the pad, the better. And this, as you can see, the, the brake pedal is going to have more pressure on it than the throttle or the clutch. And you can see here, uh, he has braced this thing accordingly. Now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, including the pivot in the bottom here, ten spacers and bolts going through there, as you can see them all there, to really reinforce this lever. So there's actually going to be no flex whatsoever in this lever when you're pushing this pedal down, when you have it set up to its highest load ratings. And you can see the, the cool little piece here is that the pedal actually moves a little bit before it contacts anything, this little spring, and there's a spacer in here with a gap. Let's see if we can get you a better look at that. So you can see there's a little gap in there. You can still see the threaded rod right in this gap in here. And then there's a spacer. So that gives you that little bit of, you can see that right there, move a little. And that's like pushing the any brake pedal, and you get a little bit of easy before you get to the, you actually compressed the pads up against the rotors. So that's a neat feature. Not many pedals have that feature, so you get that feel that it feels like a real pedal. Uh, let's see, the course that comes with the blue urethane, and again, we have the nice heavy-duty brass bushings on the pivot point there. And the load cell on this thing, and we'll take a good look at that, is a, so we get a good focus. Again, as a Mavin, and you can see it's a 60 kilogram unit. It's pretty beefy looking sitting in there. And the way this thing is set up is there is a bolt. Let's see if you can see it there. Sideways, it's right in here. And that bolt goes down into the load cell. And also keeps everything attached to this little movable piece here. This is actually not connected. If I can show you here on the inside. Uh, you can see right there that um, there's a gap in here. So this whole piece here is separate from the body of the pedal here. So it's all attached. This, the brake uh, shaft that goes down there is attached to that. So when you press down on the brake, this whole piece moves, which pushes down the load cell, and of course, again, sends the signals down the wires to the circuit board so we can calculate what you're doing. And I did take a spacer out. There's another spacer out for reinforcement also to keep these plates together. Oops, get a little higher there. There's a spacer that goes in here with two bolts, like that, that I'll put back in. But I had to take that out so you guys can get a good look at the, the load cell and be able to read what was on it. So once you put this back in, again, it adds integrity back to this, which bolts it tight and holds these plates in here. Oops, holds the plates in there. These plates have to stay in there. So a very cool design, and it's easy to make adjustments on it as far as getting this plate out of the, you can see it actually is machined in. He's machined into the plates themselves, these little notches here where this plate actually fits in. And when you get to the adjustments part, you'll see how that adjusts. And of course, you can see these kind of plates are all through the assembly where he assembles this, which is a very nice design, actually. It's going to make a very rigid pedal. And again, you can see we can actually have the same adjustments here on the front and in the back if we want to invert them or if we wanted to take the pedal and tilt it back itself we could actually change this and I'll show you that in the adjustments we can actually make this thing so it would sit flat even at this angle here if you wanted to tilt the pedals back so very very flexible pedal set up the way he did these and now we'll just go ahead now we've seen all this we'll go ahead and get to the actual adjustments of the pedals what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this set to my uh, bracket that I use to bolt everything to the stage four as far as pedal sets. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna 
hold that down with clamps while I'm making adjustments here so I can push on the pedals without them sliding all over the table and me chasing them around. So let's go ahead and get to the adjustments of the pedals.